And so our best practice uses a tool that automates this preparation of data, which makes it easy to convert an MC squared or timber line deliverable into a BIM-based estimate that can then be used for review of quantities and communication to the owner. So let's take a close look at that solution. First of all, we're going to uh, calculate the cost as a uh, first version in MC squared or in Timberline. And we're going to save that information um, as an Excel spreadsheet. So that is a report that's saved as an Excel spreadsheet. We'll then open that report, organize the data. Uh, so we'll make that transition from columns into rows. And in the next phase, we're going to import that information into Vico. After doing that, we have our first MC squared slash Timberline version of the estimate inside the Vico environment. And that will then allow us to link model elements to the um, existing line items. After doing that, or while doing that, we'll save versions on the timeline, like I just explained. Each of the, uh, the versions will then allow for doing these comparisons and seeing what the differences are between model-based quantities and manual quantities, and maybe also between the various versions of the Timberline and MC squared outputs. That is really part of the third phase, which is to analyze the data and to generate the reports. Step one would be uh, to um, uh, plan the cost in MC squared or Timberline. So this is a closer look at that process. At the end of that, uh, you want to uh, generate a report. And um, in case of the uh, MC squared option, uh, we'll use the UPC export uh, uh, format. And uh, an important uh, thing to consider there is to combine by sort codes to avoid having uh, similar line items multiple times in that, uh, in that Excel output. This is an example of, uh, of such an output. Uh, so we've got all of our codes with the descriptions. Uh, we've got a quantity in here and the, uh, the unit. And then for each of the columns, for each of the cost types, we've got values uh, where it has a zero. There's no representation of own labor in that activity. So uh, this would be items that are fully subcontracted. Now that we have that inside the VCO, uh, inside the sorry uh, Excel spreadsheet, uh, we can start to work on the uh, transition on, on transposing that information. So we have the labor, material, equipment, and uh, and other costs, or maybe subcontract, and we want to convert that into rows uh, to make it possible to import the information into the VCO office environment. And for that, we have developed a a tool that allows you to copy and paste the uh, Excel information into the spreadsheet. You run the conversion and the tool will do everything or all of the uh, the required actions uh, such as making item codes unique and, uh, and, and using the uh, code for crews that you might have in your uh, estimate as well. See here that it uses the parent quantity to make sure that all of the rows inside an activity we'll use the parent's quantity, which means that it inherits the quantity that was defined for the activity. Third step is to uh, use that import or that, uh, that created Excel information. And we'll do that uh, with the import from Excel function. Uh, so over here, you see the uh, uh, preview of the um, information that we bring in from Excel. The bottom window shows uh, the, um, uh, the Excel file that we've loaded and the exercise is about selecting which fields we want to map. So in code one, this is the first step. That's the activity codes. Number two is your resource codes. Number three is going to be the descriptions that we select. Number four is the quantities that we want to use. Uh, first from the uh, manual estimates and then uh, the formula to use the parent quantity as well. And then, of course, the consumption and unit cost, as well as the unit of measurement. So mapping those seven fields uh, to the uh, VECO Office project will result in this preview that we see here and in the top of the, uh, of the screen. And that can then be copied into the current project. 
In step four, we're going to uh, establish links with model-based quantities where available. If we look at this, uh, this column over here that's highlighted, uh, that is an element that comes from uh, your building information model. So that's a BIM element. And that BIM element will have quantities, takeoff quantities as we call them, which can be used in a formula uh, for any of the line items that you brought in from MC squared or Timberline. So if we want to link that to this line item, we can assign a formula uh, over here in the top of the screen, uh, maybe using the formula editor as well, and that automatically links up the quantities from that element to the line item, and from that moment on it will be a model-based quantity. Before starting to link up the model-based quantities, uh, we're going to save a, uh, a version uh, of the imported information, so the, the manual input. Uh, then we'll create additional versions every time we're going to link model-based elements. So the more detailed your building information model becomes, uh, the more information you can pull from elements to drive the cost in your estimate. Now, if we save these versions every time you get a new version of your model, we can do comparisons, side-by-side uh, -side comparisons, as well as the, uh, the, by using the, the cost explorer view that I explained earlier. Analysis of the project data uh, can be done in several ways. Of course, the interaction between the cost plan and the 3D view tells you where in the, in the project cost information is linked. Uh, so by selecting a line item that is model-based, uh, you can see which elements are driving the quantities, thus the cost of that, uh, that line item. And another way to analyze your data is by applying this takeoff quantity filter. Uh, so that is a built-in piece of functionality in the cost planner view, uh, which allows us to remove temporarily everything that is uh, manual entry, uh, so that we'll hide those line items that do not use model-based information, and that way we can focus on those line items that are model-based and review that with, uh, with the customer. So the last step in this process is to use all this data that we've collected, so all of the versions and all of the, uh, the models and the links to the models to generate reports. Uh, the Vico Office platform has a report designer built in uh, that allows you to create reports like this. So this would be an example where uh, we show the uh, division of all of the costs in the project and show the, the top 10 cost items, a very powerful review of the information. Um, this over here is a, a standard cost report that shows uh, the totals per CSI division. Uh, images that you might have included in your project can be included in the report. Uh, this report example over here shows a, a, a graphical comparison uh, between the, uh, the version, so the, uh, the quantities and, and costs are shown in, the, in a bar chart. And then this report over here is a uh, cost variance report, which highlights where changes um, have occurred going from one version to the next. And so with some color coding that we apply, we can see where the cost went down. Uh, that's shown in green, obviously. And uh, it will also indicate where the cost went up, and that will be shown in the, uh, with a, a red background of those cells. So the demonstration is uh, going to show those steps that I just described. It will end with, uh, with the reports that I described as well. And while we go through the, um, uh, the, the process of um, bringing in the information and linking it up uh, to a model, it's important to recognize that the versions that we're creating, so this is version 1, a version 2, and a version 3, will have an increasing specification level. Uh, so the models that, uh, that you will receive at each of these points will have more elements and more higher specification level elements. And that information might be ad hoc, so it might be unplanned and, and part of the uh, design process. Uh, you might want to decide to uh, plan that ahead as well and, and really plan what's going to be in version 1, plan what's in, going to be in version 2. And the process that... Um, at a, what Vico like to use for that is called progression planning or model progression specification. That way you always know up front what's going to be manual and what's going to be model based and from what comes from the model. You know whether it's a generic representation or whether it's a, a very spe specific 
um, representation of elements that show, for example, the percentage of rebar or the, the, the types of, uh, of steel members. So over time, the share of manual input, the blue line, will decrease. And the idea is that over time, the share of model-based information will go up the red line. 